Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling a problem called Fruits into Baskets 3. It sounds simple, but it's about efficient allocation with some tricky rules. We'll break down the problem and then explore two different ways to solve it, from a clever trick to a powerful data structure. Let's get started. Okay, here's the official problem description. Don't worry about reading every word, I'll walk you through the important parts. The main idea is that we need to play a matching game between different types of fruit and a set of baskets. Our final goal is to count how many fruit types we just couldn't find a home for. So we start with two lists. The first one, which we'll call fruits, tells us how many of each fruit type we have. For example, a list like 4, 2, 5, means we have one type of fruit with a quantity of 4, a second type with a quantity of 2, and so on. The second list, baskets, gives us the capacity of each basket. Now here are the rules, and they're really important. We have to go through the fruits one by one, in the order they appear in the list. For each fruit type, we must find the very first basket from the left, that's still empty and is big enough. Once we put a fruit type in a basket, that basket is considered used and can't hold anything else. If we look through all the available baskets, and none of them are large enough for our current fruit, well, that fruit type is left behind. Let's walk through an example to make this really solid. Imagine we have fruits with quantities 4, 2, and 5, and baskets with capacities 3, 5, and 4. We want to find out how many fruit types will be left over. First up, the fruit with quantity 4. We scan the baskets from the left. The first basket has a capacity of 3. Is that big enough? Nope. We move to the second basket, which has a capacity of 5. Is 5 greater than or equal to 4? Yes, it is. So we place this fruit type into that second basket. Okay. On to the next fruit, which has a quantity of 2. We again start our search from the very left of the basket list, looking for an available one. The first basket is still available, and has a capacity of 3. Is that big enough for a quantity of 2? Absolutely. So, we place this fruit type in the first basket. Last one. Our final fruit type has a quantity of 5. There's only one basket left, the third one, with a capacity of 4. Is 4 big enough to hold 5? It's not. Since there are no other options, this fruit type has nowhere to go. It remains unplaced. In the end, we had just one unplaced fruit type, so our answer is 1. So the most direct way to code this is to do exactly what we just did manually. For every single fruit we could loop through the entire list of baskets from start to finish. This works but it can be really really slow. If we have n fruits and m baskets, this would be an order n times m algorithm. If both n and m are large, this will definitely time out. We need a smarter way. Our first optimization uses a technique called square root decomposition. The goal is to avoid that slow full scan of the baskets. We do this by breaking the giant baskets list into smaller, more manageable chunks or blocks. For each of these blocks, we'll figure out ahead of time what the largest capacity basket inside it is. This simple pre-calculation lets us quickly determine if an entire block is useless for our current fruit, allowing us to skip it in one jump. Here's the full Python code for the square root decomposition approach. It might look a little complex at first, but we're about to break it down piece by piece. The first part is all about preparation. We figure out our block size, which is about the square root of the number of baskets. Then we create a list, max vphrase, to hold the maximum capacity we find in each block. We loop through the baskets just one time to populate this list. Finally, we create a used list, full of false values, to track which baskets we've already filled. Now for the main search loop. We go through each fruit, we start our search position at the beginning of the baskets. Here's the magic trick. We look at the pre-calculated maximum for the current block. If that maximum is smaller than our fruit's quantity, we know for a fact that no basket in this entire block can possibly work. So we can instantly jump our search position to the beginning of the next block, saving a ton of time. If a block could have a basket that fits, we then do a normal slow scan, but only within that small block's boundaries. The moment we find an unused basket that's big enough, we select it and stop searching for this fruit. We mark that basket as used. Now, a very important detail, we must then recalculate the maximum for that block, because we might have just used up its biggest basket. If we search all the promising blocks and still find nothing, we add one to our unplaced count. Alright, if you want an even faster and more elegant solution, we can bring out a more powerful tool. The segment tree. This data structure is specifically designed to answer questions about ranges very, very quickly, 
we can use it to build a special kind of search that finds the leftmost available basket that fits our fruit, and it can do this in logarithmic time which is a huge improvement. This is the complete code using a segment tree. It's organized into a class. The main logic boils down to three key operations. Building the tree, querying it to find a basket, and updating it after a basket is used. Let's look at those parts. First, the build function is called once at the start. It goes through the baskets and constructs our tree, where each node in the tree knows the maximum capacity in the range of baskets it represents. The update function is what we call after we've successfully placed a fruit. It finds the specific basket in our tree and sets its capacity to zero, effectively taking it out of play for all future searches. This query function is the heart of the solution. It's a specialized search. It starts at the top of the tree and asks a simple question. Is the maximum value in your left half big enough for my fruit? If the answer is yes, it immediately goes down the left path. This is key, because by always preferring the left, we guarantee we find the leftmost possible basket. Only if the entire left half is insufficient, does it bother to check the right path. This continues until it pinpoints the exact index of the basket we need. So how do these two methods stack up? The square root decomposition approach has a time complexity of roughly n times the square root of m. It's much better than the naive solution. The segment tree approach is even faster. Building the tree takes order m time, and then each of the n fruits takes only log m time to process. This makes its total time order m plus n log m m fris. For space, the segment tree needs more memory to store the tree itself. Let's recap the main points. The simple brute force method is a trap. It's too slow. We explored two powerful optimizations. Square root decomposition is a clever trick that groups data to let us skip big chunks of work. The segment tree is a more advanced data structure that gives us an even faster logarithmic time search. Both of these solutions are all about finding a highly efficient way to answer that one repeated question. What's the first available spot that's big enough? I hope that Breakdown helped make these advanced techniques feel a bit more approachable. If it did, please hit that like button, subscribe for more Leet Code explanations, and don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comments below. And if you're feeling extra generous, the Boba Fund is always appreciated. Thanks for watching, happy coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.